Welcome back to theCUBE's ongoing coverage of RSA 2024. We're here in Broadcast Alley. This is, uh, where are we? Day three, we're deep <laughs> into day three. We're getting into it here. Eric Bradley, my colleague from Enterprise Technology Research is here. We've done so much stuff together, Eric. So great to see you live on theCUBE. Welcome. Great, great to see you too. Yeah, it's much better, more fun live always. Yeah, this show is insane. Uh, it's great. I mean, every, anybody in security who's anybody in cyber is, is here. Secretary of State gave a keynote. Um, it was okay, you know, it wasn't like super inspiring. It was good, it was, you know, well read, <laughs> I'll say that. But he had some, actually some interesting takeouts. I think one of the big things here, one of the, a couple of big themes that, that we could talk about and then get into the survey data. One of the big differences between this year and last year is everybody last year was talking about Gen AI. Right. More like, oh, the attackers are now going to write better phishing emails, and, but it's going to make us more productive and we'll use Gen AI as an orchestration layer. This year you're hearing a lot more about we have to protect AI, secure AI differently, gen AI differently, because of natural language processing, and that's a whole new animal. Um, that's sort of one big theme. The other is critical infrastructure. Sure. Just the exposure, the critical infrastructure, the OT and IT schism, trying to figure that out. The exposures that we have are, are, are substantial. And then, you know, 8,000 other topics and, and buzzwords yeah. and, and, and acronyms. What are your, you know, we're day three, halfway through day three. What are you seeing, what are your big takeaways here? You know, first of all, it's so well attended. It's like you and I were just saying, this is back to pre-COVID levels. The, the amount of people, not only at the show, but around the show, the networking aspects, the energy's been amazing. Yep. It's been back, and I haven't seen it like this in a long time. There's probably so. 60,000, close to 60,000 yeah. people here, wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah, and you're yeah. just bumping into everybody. Now, the one thing I wish we did see more is a little collaboration. You've got some of the greatest <laughs> minds in security here. And it's like, we know the bad actors are collaborating, but I really wish we could see a little bit more on that. You know, I know that's not an easy thing to do. These guys are competing with each other, but that's one thing I'd love to see happen in future shows to maybe make that track a little bit more uh, about that. So that would be I'd love to see. But you're 100% right on the Gen AI. Last year it was just buzzword talking about it. This year it's full on announcements, product developments, how to secure it. I mean, Google coming out with their basically AI threat intelligence. There's a lot, there's a lot happening. I just saw G2 Patel, that's who I was waving to. He's, <laughs> he runs uh, security and, and collab at Cisco. And I was watching a video from him the other day and he said, you know, AI, amazing new platform, et cetera. But he said, we have the intelligence today of eight billion people on the planet. You know, soon that's going to be, the machine's going to have intelligence of 80 billion. You know, when you think about what Elon said the other day, I don't know if you heard this, he said, he was at the Milken Institute, he said 1% of the intelligence within five years, I think was his time frame, only 1% is going to be biological. 99% is going to be machine intelligence. In five years. So yeah, yeah, wow. within inside of five years. And so you're talking about you know, eight, the intelligence of 800 billion people. So that's just mind boggling. I was asking a, a CISO recently, is this like we're going to replace the, the tit for tat between humans, the bad guys and, and defenders, attackers and defenders, is that just going to be the same with machines? It's going to be smarter AI attacking right. less smart AI and then the, the Defender AI gets smarter and then just, is it just going to be machine uh, arms race? If we take the assumption that what they're saying is accurate, then yes, where else could it go? Because that's exactly what's going to be happening. And it's already happening, I think, on the malicious you know, actor side, uh, and now it has to happen on ours. So <laughs> if what he says is accurate, that is mind boggling. It's hard to even conceive it happening that fast I don't know if I want to watch that happen in the next four <laughs> years, to be quite honest, but if we take that assumption, then yes, that's exactly what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there are those who say by the end of the decade, we'll have AGI, so we'll see. And, um, and I'll say, just to point out, with the data that the, the recent security survey you and I did before RSA, Gen AI is not hype, it's happening. People are putting real dollars into Gen AI security already. So, I mean, it is happening. So let's unpack some of that, and, and of course, you and I did a, a preview, RSA preview, Overall, roughly, we think that, that IT budgets are growing at, let's call it 3.5%, 3.4, 3.5%. A vast majority of customers in the survey, 321, so not a giant end, but pretty substantial. 50% of them are actually at this yep. show, which is also very cool. But a very large proportion, 87% of the respondents expected an increase, 70% said an increase of 5% or more. Yep. So you and I in the call, and you made the point, Dave, I think the number's higher than 5%. Yep. This is the SecOps you know, segment of the marketplace, it just anecdotally, talking to people around here, talking to CISOs and budget holders, 
I would say the number is high single digits to low double digits in right. terms of the SecOps security budgets. You know, so double or triple the average. Are you seeing that here? I, I agree with that, and uh, there's a bunch of reasons why, Gen AI being one of them, multi-cloud being the other, hybrid cloud being the one that's really, really driving it. Uh, you know, all the infrastructure that you have to put in place and secure is why it's happening. The other thing I thought was interesting in our survey was about 15% of those people said their budgets for security is going up more than 15%. Now, we didn't get granular on that. We don't know if that's 100 or 50 or 30. We just know it's more than 15. So I do think if you actually looked at the number, it skews more to what you're saying. I think you know, somewhere just below double digits is probably the right number. And I'm hearing it in all the conversations we're having too, yeah. The other big takeaway from the survey, if you didn't see our, our breaking analysis, was the percent of customers saying that they're actually increasing the number of tools and tools vendors in their yeah. stack. 51% say increasing, 37% said the same, said stay the same. Only 9% yeah, said was, decreasing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And that was like, Wow, and I, we were talking off camera, I mentioned that, I showed it, the data to Jay Chaudhry last night, of course, not surprising, Jay said, well, we're not seeing that in our customer base, we're a consolidator. I would imagine that uh, CrowdStrike would say the same thing. I saw Palo Alto guys last night at one of the receptions, they said, oh no, we're seeing consolidation. Maybe, but every practitioner I talk to says, yeah, no kidding. Right. <laughs> you know, right. You're confirming what we already know, right. now you're quantifying it. What's your take on that? I mean, this is, this is really legit data. Don't question the, the, the veracity of the quality of the respondents. We know they're great. Especially when you see such a strong response. Yeah. I mean, only 9% said no, we're decreasing our vendors. I mean, it's just an astronomical number. There's really no refuting it. I, I do know that the consolidation play, the platform play, is what these companies are saying, particularly on the earnings calls. This is what they're pushing. But, Deals, deals are taking longer. The sales cycle is going longer. Uh, there's a lot of issues that's happening out on the market. They're going after bigger contracts. They take longer time. So both could possibly be true, right? Zscaler, CrowdStrike, Palo, they could be actually trying to consolidate into platform plays, but it's going to take time. And in the meantime, there's a lot of new threats, there's a lot of new infrastructure, there's APIs, there's so many other things that aren't being addressed, so the vendor sprawl is not stopping. It's, it's definitely happening. I'm speaking to people, and you know, it's easy to say that when you're a large public company, right? We have so many other smaller private people here that don't necessarily believe in vendor consolidation, that they're still trying to break into their market and you know, get into that security stack. So I, I think it's, you know, I understand their point, but the data is kind of irrefutable here. Yeah, so we're, we're a ways away from earnings season. It's got the, the big guys, CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Palo, I think it's going to be June-ish. Yep. I think, right? But we have had a bunch of report. I mean, yes. we've got F5, CyberArk, Tenable, Cloudflare, Checkpoint, Qualys, Rapid7. All of them have actually yeah. missed their billings number. Yeah, Rapid7 was, yeah. was, was getting hammered I mean, hammered what we today. are seeing, which I think is interesting, is there's uh, better margins than we expected. So I think that uh, some of these companies are using cost optimization, some discipline, to beat on the margins, but the billings expectations are lower than what the investor community had expected. But you're right, the big boys really have not reported yet, so and, we'll wait and see. But there's so much action in the market. So Wiz was supposedly acquiring yeah. Laceworks, yeah. looks like that Lacework, that supposedly fell through. I wonder if it was a debate about what they do with all the cash. You know, spies are probably want to give it back to the shareholders. Uh, a, a, a secure browser company, Island, raised 175 yeah. million. Corelight, uh, network security raised 150. Uh, uh, App Dynamics, the co-founder, got a bunch of dough from uh, City. Uh, Wiz, oh, another billion. Yeah, Wiz, another billion. <laughs> the rich get richer. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps going on it and really on and is. on. And then No Name, No Name got taken yep. out yep. Uh, by uh, Akamai. Yep. Looked like pretty short money, actually. Uh, they had 200 in, they got taken out for what, 450? I think is the number, and so maybe 20 million yeah. revenue, so they still, you know, 20, 22x revenue, so that's a rich valuation, but they had 200 in, so some folks didn't get their money back. So there. much activity in the space, and I mean, we're seeing consolidation happen there, right, through the M&A, you know, that's already starting to happen, and it's funny, so many of those ones you mentioned are in that, that CNAP space, you know, the cloud management and the application layer in the cloud. We're seeing so much activity there. Dynatrace just recently bought RuneCast, Right, there was a few other ones that were actually just recently bought in that space. Uh, and just so you know, we're actually just finishing wrapping up one of our uh, observatory and market array data studies on CNAP. It'll be out May 
22nd. And pretty much all of those names you just mentioned are included in that. So this is end user and evaluation data directly from the market and the end users about how they see these CNAP vendors. So that'll be really interesting. At the macro, your thoughts on this, uh, we we're talking all week about the data, yep. what to say, especially about the increased tools creep. One of the practitioners said to me that it's because the innovation is happening faster than the consolidation. That's and a so, great point. And, and I thought that was right on. Really great point. And you get so much money flowing in, even though you know, VC somewhat dried up, there's so much money sloshing around the, the ecosystem. So that makes sense to me, mm -hmm. um, that, that that's, that's the case. And, um, I guess the other thing is, you mentioned some of the big three really haven't announced it. I was reading a, a report from Barclays, which I thought was kind of interesting. Saket Kalia, pretty sharp analyst, was basically talking about, uh, they, they, they do a much smaller survey, it was about 100 N. He said for the first time ever, hardware-based firewalls declined. You know, meaningfully. Yep. And so we've been talking about this for a while. Yep. And now, of course, Palo Alto just announced the new firewalls this week. So, and they're saying this is with man, demand is off the charts. Yeah. You know, so again, you still have this sort of barbell-like dynamic going on. Yeah, how on long have we been talking about this transition from appliance to software security, right? And it's so important for all of them. You know, Ford and that, Cisco, Palo, the big guys out there that all started as appliance-oriented companies and trying to race over to, to you know, to SaaS security. But uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Like for, for analysts like you and I, we talk about it as if, okay, this transition's happening, it's a definite, it's already done. And we're seeing that, you know, it's finally starting to, to come to fruition. But uh, you know, I do think it's it's going to continue. It's going to continue to accelerate, um, and obviously that has huge ramifications. You know, the other thing is, uh, PE is very active mm -hmm. in this space. Toma, Bravo, uh, Vista, Insight yep. Capital, yep. they all own. And you know, seen a, Kleiner, yeah, 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 seen a so lot much of activity. security assets. They had no before on. Yep. They got taken out for I think 4.6 billion from Vista. Kind of an interesting you know angle on. Um, not necessarily building shiny new toys, but actually helping people yeah. <laughs> you know, navigate through the, the maze of cyber. A lot of, a lot of conversation, Eric, around security culture, yeah. right? And affecting that security culture. Man, uh, the SecOps guys, you got to feel for them, right? Because we're talking about all this activity, the vendor sprawl, all the new threats, the threat landscape growing, the infrastructure layer having to be, the shift left. The, I, when I think about the DevSecOps guys, I really feel for them because you know, the real DevOps guys are creative. They want to build, and they want to build fast. And they view this more as a hindrance than anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually the promise of what these CNAP tools are supposed to do. Say, okay, you don't have to worry about it. We're going to build it in for you. But the, the sock fatigue is real. And you talk to people out there. There's a lot of practitioner level people here too. I didn't expect it to be uh, so, you know, scuba dive deep into the tech. Uh, it isn't just high level here, which I thought has been great. But what I've been speaking to them, they're tired, they need help, and that's one of the reasons that they need the vendors. They need the solutions because they can't do it themselves. And it's just going to continue to happen. I'm wondering, have you been hearing similar? Absolutely, yeah, yeah no question about it. I mean, and you're right, the audience here is very mixed. Yes. It's not just C-level. Right. There's a lot of really hardcore yeah. practitioners. I was on, I was on with uh, Ilya from uh, CrowdStrike, their CTO, and he was geeking out. And then you know, one of the practitioners over here watching, he came up to me after and said, I understood everything he said. I'm like, well I didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was going to say, next year I'm going to have to bring my scuba gear right. because some of these guys are diving a little too deep for me. <laughs> so, um, what do you think about the IPO market uh, broadly and then specifically opportunities for, uh, for cybersecurity companies? I had Sneak on, pre-IPO yeah. company, Arctic Wolf is another sure. one that definitely is when, when, when the conditions are right. I was almost right, surprised about Wiz raising that money, because they're another one where I'm saying like, okay, I mean, they're, I, in my opinion, they're ready to go as well. Yeah, you would have thought you know, so. Yeah. But you know, a Beyond Trust as well as one. We just saw Rubrik go out, and uh, I think that was a really big move, because you know, it shows again that there's some appetite in the IPO market. Maybe uh, some of these people will be a little less afraid. Netscope, I mean, the fantastic product, moving from Casby to the SASE space. Uh, been around a long time privately. They have a fantastic CFO that came from a public company. Um, yeah, I think, I think there's going to be more. I think we'll see more activity, which is always fun. Yeah, I mean, generally, the IPO market, well, Reddit actually acting pretty well, for sure. You, Rubik, we were at the Rubrik event last night. It was actually a great party. I miss Bipple. He, he left before we got there, but <laughs> we'd love to have him back on theCUBE. Good, good friend of the Cube. But, 
you know, they have a tough, you know, situation in terms of the numbers, right? Doesn't look like it's beautiful, but I would expect, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not dumb people. I would expect when we see their next quarter, quarter you don't go public and then miss. Right, right. right. So they've, they've, they've got to have some momentum. I'm sure they've got good pipeline coming I out of I would be shocked if you they know. set themselves up for that. And they're yeah, in growth yeah, mode, right. they're in growth mode. So, you know, it's funny, right? A lot of, a lot of the narrative is, you know, you don't grow at all costs anymore. That's not what the street wants. So I think the street's looking at, at, at Rubrik a little cautiously, you know, but they're going for growth because they have like no market share in a $200 billion market. You know, it's funny the street can say that at times, but it always comes back to growth. That's where the valuation comes from. They might occasionally tighten their belts and, and get sane or rational, but I, I was an industry analyst, you know, on the, on the Wall Street side for two decades. Eventually, it always goes back to momentum valuations and growth. So they can say what they want. I don't think that'll last. Yeah, certainly <laughs> at least in, yeah. in tech. Yeah. And uh, of course, we're watching yeah. for earnings and Palo Alto is, is cause they, they didn't miss last quarter, but they disappointed everybody because of Thunderdome. Sounds like Thunderdome's got momentum again. Can hide a lot of stuff with those big government contracts. Um, CrowdStrike is priced for perfection. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they sneeze in the wrong direction. And you know, we've been seeing a lot of that with, again, smaller names, but there's been slight misses on billings. Rapid seven. And they're coming down 10, 20% reaction in valuations. So yeah, it's priced to perfection, and there really is a lot of high growth expectation that goes along with that. So even a tiny bit of miss, you're going to get hit. And I see that as a real positive, actually. I, I, I like to see that. I think that's one of the differences between this era and the dot-com. Dot-com, you'd hit. You know, hit your numbers, yeah. maybe beat it a little bit. Oh, yeah. you know, great, they've got a website. Yeah. You know, the grow, dot grow, com grow. era also had a rational analyst, I mean, on the Wall Street, on the security side, where you don't see that anymore. It, it, it was the Wild West. I was around back then <laughs> as a securities analyst. There wasn't as much regulation back then as there is now. I think they've done a great job of tightening that. The research on that side has gotten so much stronger. So I think you're, we're not going to see any of that irrationality anymore. Well, back in the day, investment banking and research, yeah we're part of the same exactly. organization. And exactly. so a, a research analyst could get paid for a company being on the, you know, the IPO. Yes. And so what are they going to say? Yeah. They're not going to say <laughs> negative things about <laughs> yeah. it. You know, today, analysts are truly independent. Yeah. In hindsight, and, that was the most obvious thing ever, but when we were living through it, it was just normal. Yeah, yeah and so, so you had a lot yeah. of hype going yeah. on, you know, yeah. and uh, so that's, you know, there'll, there'll be some other loophole that comes in. What else you got? What else? Well, what you know, I, I think some of the things that we're hearing right now is uh, the priorities in security. The identity is obviously super, super high. Threat management and the EDR, XDR. And I think it's interesting some of the huge announcements that we've had here, right? I mean, how do we not talk about Cisco and Splunk? It was a year ago you and I heard about it. We rushed out a quick customer survey on it to see how the synergies were going to be. We've been following it closely all along. So seeing that integration come out this week is a long away. Yeah. But you know, it's not an easy thing. These are two big boats, not easy to integrate. But seeing that XDR and the, the threat uh, vulnerability management components put together is massive. It's huge for their customers. Uh, we're seeing a lot more threat intel. Part of the survey, if you remember, Dave, what we did is ask people about data telemetry. What threat intelligence are you taking it in? Is it only specific to your company? And it wasn't. 30% are saying, no, we're taking in threat intel from everything. Global, industry related, not just our company specific. And for all the data ingestion models out there, you got to love hearing that, right? Yeah, yeah, right? There's got to be a tipping point. You can't just ingest all telemetry. But right now, the appetite for that still seems to be growing. And I think that's really good news for some of these vendors because you know, there's obviously just the more threat intelligence you have, the better. And also another thing we're seeing a lot is a FedRAMP. I've been hearing a lot about it this week. So yeah. getting FedRAMP approved is really a priority for these uh, security vendors. And I think that's uh, something we're going to continue seeing. Yeah, and uh, we've said, it, let's call it a 200 billion dollar market, 100 billion of that is services. So yeah. a lot of those services, or some of those services, are helping people get certified. Yeah. So a lot of action here, you can see it behind <laughs> us. It's just amazing. And this is the quiet part of yeah, exactly. RSA. We're yeah. in Moscone West. You should see, south, the, you should see you the north even, and south floor. You yeah. can't even walk yeah. through there. I mean, it's insane. It's like, it's like reInvent. Eric, thanks so much for coming on, man. Great seeing really you, Dave. Appreciate having you, having you on. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back. The Cube's continuous coverage. Day three, RSAC 2024. You're watching theCUBE.